Breathe in Christ, and thank you for joining us today. We begin with our salutation and calling. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit, let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, give us an increase of faith, hope, and love, that receiving what you have promised, we may love what you have com commanded. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Jesus Christ, most wonderful, our hymn of the day for this coming Sunday, Jubilee Rhythm is an early title to this hymn ascribed to St. Bernard of Clairvaux, who lived from 1090 to 1153. Dr. Meliphas, it is one of the several centos drawn from the longer 42 stanza poem and translated by Edward Caswell in 1814, to, who lived from 1814 to 1878. Others include Jesus, the very thought of thee, Jesus, thy mercies are untold, and Jesus, Jesu, thou the beauty art. Many other poets have also translated the hymn in the, in the opinion of Dictionary of Hymnology compiler John Julian. He says this, This elaborate and extensive use of St. Bernard's rhythm is almost, if entirely, uniquely unique to in hymnody. A few hymns exceed it in the number of their translations into English as the Adeste de Fidelis, the Dies Irae, and the Ein Feste Burg, uh, that would be a mighty fortress. No, no, but no other poem uh, in any language has furnished to English and American hymn books so many hymns of sterling worth and well-deserved popularity. Eugene the th Eugene the third pope from 1145 to 1153 enlisted Bernard to promote the Second Crusade, which was considered a complete failure, even in his own day. As a result, Bernard retired from public ministry to the austerity of a Cistercian cloister in the dark moments the light of Christ shone clearly and beautif beautifully, beautifully for the theologian who was highly respected by Martin Luther, especially when he wrote of Christ. Luther said, I have observed this in St. Bernard. Whenever he begins to speak of Christ, it is a pure, pleasant thought to follow pleasure to follow, and his table talks, Luther declared Bernard was superior to all the doctors in the church when he preached. Doubts about Bernard's authorship <clears throat> have been raised in the past century and a half in favor of an anonymous English author of, of late 12th and early 13th century, the Anglican Archbishop Trench, who lived from 1807 to 1886, <clears throat> excuse me, in response to such questions, replied, "If he did not write the hymns attributed to him, it is not easy to guess who would have written them. And indeed, they bear profoundly the stamp of his mind. Many phrases in this hymn parallel the genuine prose of Bernard, especially from his <clears throat> canticles and his sermons in the Song of Songs. Excuse me. Little. <clears throat> oh. In 1721, Pope Innocent XIII made the holy name of Jesus a festival to be observed by the entire Catholic Church. In 1722, Roman Breviary assigned three centos from the hymn of the offices of the feast Jesus, uh, delicious, delicious memory. These are different uh, Latin names. Uh, Matins, Jesus, uh, let me see here. Matins, uh, which was observed around midnight, makes sense. The image of light in stanzas two and three, appropriate for night hours. The feast of the name of Jesus was removed from the Catholic calendar after the Second Vatican Council in 1962. But Lutherans still observe, or observe it on January 1st its historic date in conjunction with the circumcision of Jesus. 
So we have a feast day uh, in January, January the 1st, that uh, the, the Roman Catholics have gotten rid of. Okay, uh, that's, that's our, our hymn of the day. There's some extra stuff there. Sorry for the coughing. Sometimes it happens. Let's close with prayer. Hello, we thank you for this day. Uh, we ask you to be with us now as we go forth, uh, praying that uh, you would help us to make good use of your name, to carry it with us in ways that are respectful and honoring to you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.